Ladies and gentlemen, I'm joined with, uh, by Detective Inspector Gretchen Atkins of the Eastern Suburbs Police Area Command and I want to provide you all with uh, details of a significant breakthrough in the investigation into the disappearance of Melissa Caddick but we'll recap a few points uh, if you'll bear with me. As you're all aware, Melissa was last seen physically uh, at her home address in Dover Heights on Wednesday the 11th of November last year. During that day, a search warrant was executed by uh, the Australian Securities Investment Commission, RASIC, which concluded that evening. Police have been informed that around 5.30am the following day, the front door of her home was heard to close uh, by her son, who believed that it was Melissa leaving to go for a run. Um, at that time, um, Melissa left her personal belongings, which included her mobile phone, wallet and keys. The next morning, Melissa Caddick was in, reported missing to police. As a result, a missing person investigation was launched, which involved police from the Eastern Suburbs Police Area Command, the State Crime Command Missing Persons Registry and other resources. Appeals for information yielded numerous inquiries, which have been followed up without any confirmed sightings of Melissa from the time of her reported disappearance. Part of those investigations included extensive land, air and sea searches. During the course of those searches, our Marine Area Command provided advice to investigators based on uh, offshore drift modelling that raised the possibility that an object or a body that entered the water around the Davis Heights area could drift as far south as the Bermagui area. I can now inform you that uh, last Sunday, Sunday the 21st of February, a shoe was located on the shoreline of the Bordana National Park south of Tathra by campers. Within that shoe were the remains of a human foot. That foot and the shoe, which matched the size and description of a shoe that Melissa Caddick was seen wearing during the execution of the ASIC search warrant, were conveyed to the New South Wales Health Forensic and Science Services section here in Sydney, where DNA from the foot was last night matched to DNA, a DNA sample from Melissa Caddick's toothbrush and from family members. Melissa's family were informed of the identification last night and are obviously distressed. Now, as you're aware, there's been a lot of commentary and a lot of speculation in relation to the uh, disappearance of Melissa Caddick, and that's understandable. Clearly, the circumstances of Ms. Melissa's disappearance uh, have been distressing for many people, including her alleged victims and, of course, her family and friends. I can say that exactly how Melissa came to enter the water is still a mystery and uh, will be subject of ongoing investigations by the Strike Force team. And police have always kept an open mind in relation to uh, what the circumstances were for her disappearance, including the fact that Melissa may have taken her own life. However, a definitive decision in relation to the manner, time and cause of death is a matter for the coroner. And investigations, as I said, will be ongoing. Um, finally, can I acknowledge the outstanding work of police from the Eastern Suburbs Police Area Command, State Crime Command, um, our search specialist search officers, the Marine Area Command, and most importantly, our, our colleagues at New South Wales Health um, for the outstanding work that they've done in a timely manner to, uh, to match uh, those remains to Melissa's DNA.